have got down in there and got out to the pipe line. We are at Arrowhead Park on Lake Tobasaki here in Macon, Georgia. What's your favorite part about Arrowhead Park? The lake. It's just so nice, calm, and peaceful. You can even see the geese. It has a very cool playground, a swimming area, and it's easy to walk around. You're not going up a bunch of hills. It's pretty much all flat. Um, I wouldn't say that about some of the campsites though. A lot of the campsites are a little unleveled. So I think before you decide to get you a spot here, ask the, ask the clerk if you can ride around and take a look to see which one would better suit your rig. That it? Hi, my name is Spencer Hawkins. I'm the Emergency Management Director for Macon Bibb County. And I wanna spend a few minutes with you today to talk about how you can be prepared before and during and after a major event. You wanna make sure that you have a plan and you have a plan before you get to the campsite, before you get to the campground. You know how far away your safe location is. It may be the bathrooms, it may be the administration building where the campsite is, but you wanna make sure that those uh, areas are available 24 hours. Tornadoes, disasters don't necessarily only come during the daytime. So at four o'clock in the morning, if that administration building is closed, they may, that may not be the best place for you. The other thing you want to consider is maybe the safest place for you isn't in your campground. You may have to leave the location and look for a store, a restaurant, or some other place that can provide you shelter. It's really important that you have um, extra supplies and a, and a go kit for uh, emergency equipment readily available and in one location. Things like a flashlight, a first aid kit, some pre-prepared you know, shelf stable meals, extra drinking water um, can all be extremely important for you um, while you're going through and while you're going through this event. Uh, the most important thing though is being aware. You have to know what's going on. You have to know when to take action. And something as simple as a, as a $30 weather radio can can really make the difference in your safety uh, you can get these you know almost in any location they're easily programmable for anywhere you might go so if you're in florida one week and the next week you're in tennessee you can easily reprogram that radio for wherever you may be look at that he's posing mm -hmm. ready when you are you're a good dog aren't you yes you are so a lot of folks, when they go RVing, when they go out camping, they love to bring their pets with them. And let's be honest, our four-legged friends are a member of the family. So it's important that we take care of them as well. If you're asked to evacuate, you may need to plan early. You need to make sure that they're being taken care of as well. So in your disaster kit, in your go bag, make sure you have some extra pet food. Make sure you have extra water and enough for, for these guys as well. A little point of order that a lot of people forget is if you are evacuated and you do need to go to one of the shelters of last resort or Red Cross shelter, a majority of them will not accept pets unless they are a certified uh, service animal. One of the most important things is when you're out, when you're, you know, when you're RVing, when you're camping, and we do ask you, there might be a need to evacuate, there might be a need to get out of your location. If you have your own car, if you have your toad that you're bringing with you, it's important to make sure that you can move that quickly. So once again, pre-planning is the key. There, so that we can be right over there. Yeah, on it's, it's good to have right. you know, that, that close proximity. This will be your last call. 20 minutes, you're done being alone. Get out for We are at the Museum of Aviation. 
in Warner Robins, Georgia. It's really neat. All kinds of different museum things to check out. Uh, this was my favorite place to come to when I was a kid. It's a free museum. Doesn't cost a dime to get into. Lots of things to check out. It's just uh, next to Robbins Air Force Base in Warner Robins, Georgia. Did I mention that it's free? A little kid. And all of these aircraft at the time, well, I won't say all of them, but a lot of these aircraft at the time were actually just out in a big gravel lot. And you could go up to them and look at them real closely and it was, oh man, as a little kid, it was fantastic. Um, now it's all inside. So whether it's raining or hot or cold, man, I tell you, I remember coming here in the summer times and just being abusively hot, just so hot. But now you can just, peruse at your leisure. Did I mention it's free? I did? Okay, just check it. <laughs> well everyone, we've had our very first Adventuring medical emergency with the baby. Jackson accidentally hurt Mac, and unfortunately, Mac did not respond kindly to it. So now we're gonna have to go to the doctor and make sure that he's okay. I've been doing first aid classes for the better part of 10 years, probably longer than that. I've done first aid on severely injured people. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. I've gotten a little bit more advanced training here and there in the military. It's, um, it, it, it's pretty second hand to me now. But one thing that I've noticed, this will be the second time that we've had sort of a, 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 a laceration issue, if you will, with, with Jackson, is that little kids, especially not you know nonverbal kids, can't communicate yet. They don't understand. They just know that it hurts. They don't necessarily want you to touch it. And when you're trying to stop bleeding and they're wiggling and wobbling, it is hard. And you're not going to be able to do that by yourself. Uh, Stephanie and I both had to hold Jackson down just so we could put some gauze on him to stop the bleeding. Uh, luckily, it didn't bleed that much. You know, it didn't hit any sort of veins or arteries. It's just a just a surface laceration into the skin tissue. You know, first aid class does not prepare you for working on a toddler, does it, Stephanie? Nope. But Jackson's gonna be okay, we're gonna be okay. Mama's hopefully gonna recover from her traumatic experience this morning. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the Jackson's blood out of my shirt. I think, I think Jackson's shirt's pretty well ruined as well. But um, emergencies happen, disasters happen. And it's just best if you know how to help them, if you know how to help yourself if you're hurt and to make sure that you have the tools that you need to help yourself. A first aid kit can be super simple. You don't need the, the suitcase first aid kit with 506 pieces of items in it. You just need some gauze, some tape, some roller gauze, some gloves, and probably a tourniquet or two. Uh, but the American Red Cross, FEMA, your local state emergency management, so in Georgia it'd be GEMA, and your Department of Public Health can all provide you great information. Also, talk to your doctor. They will be a great source of information too. So, always be prepared, always be ready, because you never know what's gonna happen. Is that good? Uh, what is this? Not a paid endorsement by. Not a paid endorsement by O'Reilly Auto Parts. <sighs> the adventure of camping. Uh, it's there's always something. Uh, whether it's going to be with your RV, it's going to be with your tow truck. So don't let the eventuality that you're going to have to have 
problems and have them fixed hold you back from adventure. Luckily, my neighbor Gary, which <laughs> he's now been in every episode so far, if you've been paying attention, uh, up until recently actually worked at a mechanic shop. So today, we're going to replace my alternator. This truck only has a 200 amp alternator. So there's not a lot of headroom there for accessories. Now this particular model truck had the option to have a heated seat and a cooled seat as well as a built-in inverter. The, that model or, or those options would then come with a 220 amp alternator. Same truck, same engine, same everything else. It's just a little bit bigger alternator to handle the accessories. So, I pay a little bit of extra money to get the bigger alternator. 220 amps. Uh, for those of you who aren't nerds like me, 220 amps, that's 20 more amps than comes with the standard alternator in the truck. Uh, 20 amps at 12 volts, you multiply it. So that's 240 watts. So you multiply volts times amps to find watts and to find you know you can take watts and divide it by volts to get amps or watts divided by amps to get volts uh, not looking forward to this this is not what i had planned for the weekend Got a fish out through this hole here, but now that I'm looking at it, how are we gonna get out without that pipe there? But, I mean, easy on that. I'm sure, that's three hundred dollars. Let's see how it came oh, out. Okay, bird. See how it came yep. out. So let's take a bird. Just make sure look, we got three pins. We got three pins. Three pins. And when you're holding it, exactly the same. Exactly the same. It should just be 20 more amps, more power. Yeah. It should just a number of windings. Yep. Yeah. So a few years ago, I went to go get in the truck to go to work. And when I cranked up the truck, <laughs> I heard the most awful racket. You heard a ruckus? Heard a ruckus. And I was like, what was that? And then I look over and I see my cat running away. But she was running, didn't look injured or hurt. Then I look back down the road and floating sort of in the air down the road, I see this white puff of like fur and I'm like, that's odd. Whatever, I'm late for work. Well... There's a couple year old cat hair. Meow. And who knows if that inability, you know, adding friction or adding heat. heat. Yep. You know? I mean, it's wound. It all in there, yeah. It's wound all throughout this thing. I mean, it must have, the fan must have got her real good. But she's okay. Took her to the vet, yeah. gave her some medicine. She was good. So. Don't worry about the cat. 